this is Outside the Box. Standing by on today's show is Lisa Marsh Ryerson, president of AARP Foundation. Welcome to the show. Hey, Janine. It's always great to be with you. And I love the title of this show, Outside the Box. It, it just what it does, what you intend it to do. So many possibilities, right? And we have to yes. broaden our thinking to yes. find solutions. You know, Lisa, especially now, being that here we are over a year into the pandemic, yes. it's not really in our rear view mirror, I tell people. And we right. still have to be resilient and take care of ourselves. Um, talk a little bit about first, what your role is at AARP. Yeah, I'm really fortunate enough to be to serve as the president of AARP Foundation and also as an executive vice president at AARP. And Janine, the great gift of my work is that I support a wonderful team, millions of program participants and work across this nation to end senior poverty. It's wonderful because there have been, you know, this is a gross under exaggeration. Sure. You know, so many people affected by poverty, but just so I know That's so right. many people with the pandemic. There really are. And, you know, even pre-pandemic, as it relates to people 50 and older, already 10 million were living at or below the federal poverty level. But mm -hmm. 37 million, I would say, were on the cliff, yeah. you know, one life event away from slipping into poverty. And what I appreciate so much uh, about you and about your Thank programs you. is that you're thinking intergenerationally. So at AARP Foundation, we're focused on adults who are 50 and older, but so many of the circumstances occur earlier in life. And so we need to connect generations and have opportunity and pathways to opportunity exist for all across the life course. Yes. And what's so great too, is I remember as part of the fellowship, uh, Age Boom Academy, Yes, you talked about, and I think you had some, a representative perhaps talk about this, of what they're doing for seniors that feel isolated. Right yes. Now. Yes, I absolutely did. And when you think about, when we think about career paths or ending senior poverty, of course, it all, it's about helping individuals and communities foster and build sustaining social connections mm. that help people and communities be strong, resilient, as you said, yes. and restore hope. And as we're working to increase income for older adults, we know that strong social connections are at the core of that work. For us, it's about connecting with organizations who are doing great work in communities and have evidence-based solutions that we might help them scale. We have a Connect to Effect platform, I think you know, connecttoeffect.org, which really is a digital front door with a local um, assistance directory, a lot of information, um, information on virtual volunteering, which is key towards maintaining okay. our social connections, mm -hmm. information on taking an assessment to know where you're at on your social health continuum and then tips to maintain those social connections. And then opportunities to connect with evidence-based solutions. Some are uh, community-based and some are digital, whether it's a right. chat bot or other tools. Yes, you know, I'm, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, what could I get my stepmom involved with? Because she That's is right. living alone. Uh, she does have her iPad. I just connected her with Zoom. She knows now how to FaceTime, um, but she's isolated. And I, I know yes. that there's a huge loneliness factor. Uh, so it sounds like there are some things that she could do. And I know she's a yes. member of AARP because I just went through some paperwork and I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> tell, her, tell her thank you. And at the foundation, even if mm -hmm. your mother-in-law or someone is not an AARP member, we serve members and non-members alike. At really? AARP Foundation. So that's something else that's really important to know. And when I think about your, your, um, my stepmom, your stepmom, yeah. um, thank you. I, I yeah. am thinking she might be just a great virtual volunteer. I think so. And she has had so many experiences as a volunteer from Meals on Wheels. That's right. Community gardening in, in Stanford, Connecticut. Um, and I actually, it's funny you say this, Lisa, because I've I was reminding her of all the wonderful things that she's done in her life from theater yes. to working in the fashion industry where she met my dad. Um, and she, I could see her light up. I could yes. see that spark of, oh, wow, I do have things that I could contribute in a conversation and so many diverse experiences. 
Janine, as is um, typical of your ability to foster connections. And, and I know, and I get the sense that you really understand the power of relationships. So I love that you talk to your stepmom about her journey. I think what happens so often as people age is that as they look, connections matter, right? Mm -hmm. Human connection yeah. matters and we want to matter. Yes. And to know that gifts and talents and purpose will still be able to take root. Yes. Um, and I, I really appreciate that you walked her through that journey, which was the journey of rich experiences for your stepmom. Mm -hmm. And also a reminder to her that she has skills right. that are relatable for organizations today. I know very she important. Think, she didn't think she did. You know, here she's uh, 86. Sure. Yes. And I said, you know, you do. You have, we went, we were, she was showing me photos of her in the theater years oh, ago. Oh, I love that. And I love seeing these pictures. I was sharing them with people. And I said, look at these different things that you've done. And then later on, you helping other people, whether, like I said, Meals on Wheels or gardening. Yes. She's yes. A master gardener, where she, I can't even believe the size of our garden. And it was, Crazy. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I wish that I was a master gardener. I'm not, but I have to say my daughter planted some really beautiful dahlias and they're doing okay, Janine. Okay. <laughs> I was just out this morning uh, trying to tend them. But you know, you've hit on all of those essential points, which is how do we ensure that older adults and that people across all ages have connections with a reliable social network, someone or some people they can count on who right. will listen to them. Yes. and who will validate their experiences. It's really important. And then how do we keep people of all ages, in particular older adults who are at much more significant risk and women and people with low income of social isolation, yes. how do we ensure that they have accessible, affordable access to key community resources? And I'll share some with you. You know, here in the pandemic, as you know, we pushed a lot of people into safety mode. You know, we took yes. our older adults and we said, we're, we have to stay away from you. We can't see you. We can't let you see the grandkids. And yes. we push we'll see you through a window or no, through FaceTime. And so we made people feel even more isolated and yes. less connected. And um, I know, for instance, my stepmom will say, I'm okay. I'm fine. I have these few people. And I know, I know that she doesn't have enough interaction. So That's right. She might think I'm a pain in the neck. <laughs> but you check on her regularly oh. and you visit. You know, every day. I actually had not seen her since January 2020 because of the yes. Pandemic. And it but was how great. It was to finally so see her. Oh, it was it was incredible. You know, she was very appreciative. Yeah. Yes, and I think the tools that you talk about. Of course, we were in that time where um, keeping people safe, in particular older adults, because it really is shameful the toll that the pandemic has taken across this nation. Yeah. But specifically the deaths and serious illness for older adults. Right. So of course we had that time when we needed to um, be physically distant. I yes. never wanna say social distance, be physically, physically distant physically. from one another, but then to also um, leverage digital tools that we have. Mm -hmm. However, I do agree with you as we are able to safely connect again, following mm -hmm. guidelines in person, you probably saw the magic and the oh, difference yeah. from talking with her on the phone or using um, a video chat. Oh, definitely. Right. Definitely. Right. Yes. So let's dive into the fact that, you know, so many people have been impacted losing their jobs, you know, yes. from students losing their internships and job opportunities to older yes. adults to now there's a group of people that have quit their jobs because they've realized they didn't have enough meaning in their life. And the pandemic right. kind of gave them a reality check and they're deciding, I don't want to, do what I used to do. Yes. Um, what are you seeing? Yeah. Well, first of all, you're right. There are some, some big waves, aren't they? And, and a lot of disruption in the workforce. So I want to talk with you about several things that we're seeing. First of all, again, Janine, you hit on it. There is significant job loss over the course of these 16 months and counting in the evolving um, pandemic state in our nation. So individuals of all ages have lost their jobs. Many, many older adults, 50 and older, have lost their jobs, and many women who are older yes. have lost their jobs. So I just want to, to, to talk about that. Additionally, if you are an older worker, it becomes very difficult to get back into the workforce, and you and I have talked about that previously. Mm -hmm. So we do know, based on the Great Recession, 
and we would anticipate that it would continue post pandemic, that older workers who've been longer term unemployed, say six months or more, can take twice, it can take them twice as long as other workers to reenter the workforce. You know, why is that? Ageism is alive and well right. in our nation. Oh, yeah. And we have to do much more to both help individuals who are seeking work, and we can, you and I can talk about that and what we do at AARP Foundation, and also help employers understand the bottom line benefits of an intergenerational workforce. And they are significant, and they are significant. You know, I think that's really incredible, which is why I told you I'm taking this uh, outside the box mentoring series and making an intergenerational. I call it really sometimes the grandparent effect because I think it's terrific. You think about the connection. Be- I don't know about you, but I had this incredible connection with my with your grandparents. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And we see the grandparent effect. I, I've told you before about our intergenerational volunteering program, AARP Foundation Experience Corps, mm-hmm. where we're, we're working in underserved schools with children who are underserved across the nation, using older adult volunteers and communities who are their literacy tutors. That's an example mm-hmm. of a grandparent effect. Mm-hmm. All of our research, this is RCT studies, confirmed that there is um, significant gains for students who then know how to read fluently and to read to learn by the time they enter fourth grade. And 98% of our volunteers say they found their purpose again and that their well-being is improved as a result of volunteering. As it relates to work, AARP and several other organizations have completed surveys over the past few years that confirm that an intergenerational and a diverse intergenerational workforce is good for the employees, workers of all ages, and is good for organizations. Yes. So we need to get there. It, 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 that's the grandparent effect. Yes. Or it is that impact. There is another AARP survey, Janine, I think it was 2019, but it's recent. Okay. That, that showed that of those surveyed, 98% felt more fulfilled by virtue of having an intergenerational network of friends. Oh, I love that. I feel that way. Yes. You know, I learned so much from my employees and colleagues Mm -hmm. across many generational cohorts. And I also am lifted up when I feel that they're tapping into me for experiences that I have had across my career. Definitely. Definitely. I will say this. It really comes down to mental health. It's well-being. You're right. It's well-being. It's your mental, physical, and emotional health. That's right. That's what I hear AARP is doing. That's what I think are. other people are, need to do. I think it has to start in schools when children are younger. They can see yes. the value of intergenerational relationships. That's right. Yeah. And to call it what it is, the relationship between learner and teacher is intergenerational. Yes. By virtue of that relationship. But, you know, I say that it's so obvious, right, Janine? But we don't call that out. No, we don't. So imagine that, you know, years ago in my career, when I think about the wild ride that I've been on, I was a a fifth and eighth grade teacher. And and I loved that time in my career. And everything that it required of me to be empowering um, younger students and everything that I learned from them Mm -hmm. about being the best educator I could be. That's amazing. I love how you had that experience and now where you are now. Yes, you know. Yes, it is. And then in between, um, I think, you know, I served for tw- just about 20 years as a college president at a, a residential college where primarily our students were what who would be considered traditional age student. Though we did have a women in lifelong learning program, which was so important to me and something we've invested in over time. And I think really led me to my work, um, really supported my, my journey to AARP. So I've had the great benefit of working with learners and people from diverse backgrounds and diverse ages. And I know I've been challenged by that Mm -hmm. and also inspired by the opportunity. That's fantastic. So let me jump into this question. What advice would you give to people right now uh, who, since you've worked with all different ages, let's say the college student that had plans for this amazing job in let's say New York or San Francisco or wherever, and the pandemic hit and they have to pivot and they're feeling lost. Yes, I, you know, and, and as you said, Janine, we certainly know evidence base from, from surveys that we have seen across all age groups and adults age 18 and older, right. um, sharp increases in anxiety and depression, 
yes. uh, or decreases in mental well-being, as you were saying early. A lot of that is tied to resources. Yes. And so the inability to be able to secure the essentials in their lives because they either lost work or that internship, mm -hmm. which is work or other opportunities. I always go back to our program, uh, Back to Work at 50 Plus, which uses a great um, teaching tool called Seven Smart Strategies. Um, and the seven smart strategies we have built and designed for workers who are 50 and older, but I'll just go through a couple of them with you, Janine. Okay. I think sure. they apply to us across all ages and I'm not giving them to you in order, but okay. first of all, when you said people feel lost, it's a challenging time on so many fronts, isn't it? There are this mm -hmm. convergence of, of pandemics, the economic downturn, COVID-19, ongoing systemic issues around racism and discrimination. So it is a time when many of us um, are wondering what the, the roadmap forward is. Yes. Important to stay strong and focus on self. To yeah. really carve out that time, isn't it? To fit what makes us strong and to stay strong. Mm -hmm. Target your job search. So really by targeting, I mean, who are the employers in your area who are looking for employees? Yes. Maybe you're targeting based on skills that you know you have that are really strong. Maybe it is location-based that you've made a decision about where you want to be. Anyone can head to aerpfoundation.org and find information on, on this program. Oh, good. I think it's really important to um, meet people who know people. Yes. Build your networks. That's true for social connection and combating isolation and loneliness, but it's certainly true in our job searches right. to meet people who know people. Yes. Stay curious and have a learning mindset. Mm -hmm. This is a time to build your skills toolbox. So whether or not those are digital tools and strategies or other skills that you want to hone in on and a lot of resources today for individuals to have access to free or low cost learning yes. to be able to increase, increase their skills. So those are just a few, you know, a few That's of the great. tips. Um, get build up your ability to compete in today's online job application world. So really be sure that you have your materials, that you're connecting on LinkedIn, that you're really looking at your, um, that you have the know-how to apply for jobs digitally, yes. and then connect with organizations that are tasked with finding talent for employers. That might mm -hmm. mean that you decide right now that you're taking temporary work or part-time work. Yes. but find out where those agencies are. I will. So add, I hope those are helpful tips. Oh, no, they're great. I was going to add to that is that, you know what? Take some time for yourself. Go do something Absolutely. completely opposite, right? That's part of the focus on yourself and stay strong. Yeah. That I would say. Because you never know when you're paddling in your kayak or taking tennis lessons in a group that you might start right. a conversation with somebody that works for some company or knows someone. Right. Yes. And I, you know, you're really, again, Janine, you're underscoring, you know, it's like meet people who know people, be open to the possibility open, yes. of the connections that you can right. make in your community, both in current network and expanding that network. Is it hard? It sure is. Does it take focus and work? Of course it does. But I think there are, you know, we are there to help Yes. for older workers who are returning to the workforce. We do a lot of work, Janine, and the growing population of adults who are 50 and older who are becoming entrepreneurs. Yes. Um, you're a great mentor because you're an entrepreneur. Thank you. Um, for others who are wanting to start their own businesses. And this program, Work for Yourself at 50 Plus, again, doesn't tell people what to do, but helps adults who are 50 and older weigh their options. Is um, entrepreneurship or self-employment a good next step for individuals who either want to try it or are having difficulty securing other work. And, you know, the success stories, I mean, we've worked with individuals who've started their own um, yoga um, businesses, someone who started a veggie burger distribution business. I mean, all, all sorts of ideas. That is great. Um, that have come out of work for yourself at 50 plus. Be open you know, to the possibilities. And, and, People should also know this, that rejection can do you a favor. So yeah. I remember um, trying have to- Have you had that experience? Oh, so, I have. so <laughs> many times. Yes. You want something so bad and forget it. You're not getting it. Yes. Whatever arena. And, but I feel like all those are rejections sometimes. They lead you to be stronger and lead you in your own path. Because you think, I remember um, 
you know, trying out for something at the beginning of the pandemic, it was a freelance job. And I thought, oh, they wanted me to host some online thing. Yeah. And all of us were kind of competing for it. And I didn't get it. And I thought, well, why don't I just do my own thing? And look what's happened. You've and look created your own platforms own and your platform. own and right. your own range of uh, businesses, right. of opportunities for yourself. I think that is true. That does require, doesn't it, um, focus and the skills of reflection. So when that oh, happens yeah. to me, I find I ask myself, I, you try to, of course, you could be sore filled, you could be let down yeah. when you really want something. But then to take the step back and say, you know, what about this? Right. Uh, why wasn't I the right match? And, and what are my other opportunities? Now, as you and I know, Janine, this is always a bit, there's more space in someone's life for those reflective activities or for focus on self when you have enough resources. Yes. So what we see for individuals of all ages, but certainly those who are 50 and older and are low income or living with scarce resources, it can be so challenging when you're struggling every day just to meet to meet the essentials, which is why I'm thrilled that AARP Foundation and all of our partners across the nation are really working hard to have, you know, job training, um, workshops and opportunities and coaching sessions uh, right. available available for free um, for, free. for older adults who are struggling. And That's the resources incredible. are freely, are available. Uh, and the website for that, well. is that just aarp.org or is there a special link for that? Yeah, aarpfoundation.org. Okay. Um, and I will say this, I've had people reach out to me in the past year and a half um, looking for advice, all yes. different ages, right? And I would say reach out to people on LinkedIn because, yes. or somebody could reach out to me. I do not say no. Unless I feel like somebody is selling me something. They want to talk to me. That's right. Have a thing. And it's so obvious. But typically it's been students and I've, I've spoken to them. One went to Syracuse and my high school. I think I told you. And yes. taking an hour to talk to somebody. You know what? You can spare that time. I agree with you. And it goes back to our earlier conversation about our own social health. Mm -hmm. Not only is it important to find that time, but I guarantee people. And in my experience, I get more than I give. Oh, yes. In those dialogues. So I, you know, you and I have talked on LinkedIn. I, I, I absolutely know that it's important right. to learn those social networking platforms. I accept invitations. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you get to decide on your LinkedIn platform, the level of yes. communication you will have with a variety of others. Right. But I do think it is, it's about human connection. It goes back to where we started. To I be agree. able to share our experiences, they may apply or be insightful for others on their journey. And we can also use those connections for our own ongoing learning as well. But that those intergenerational connections are key. I agree. And I would say also, don't be afraid to do this. Get to ask somebody if they would spare 20 minutes, 15 minutes to get on Zoom to actually meet you face to face. That's right. And just try right. to be yourself, you know, I would say that. What we hope that we are, are sharing with the listeners and the viewers today that you and I know the power uh, of being authentic and, um, and openly sharing yes. our journeys and the experiences that I and my team are having are privileged enough to have in the work that we do at AARP Foundation. But connection matters. It sure does. Anything else you'd like to leave us with? No, just how pleased I am, Janine, that you've launched, Thank that you. you are an entrepreneur who has launched out of the box and that you're thinking about mentoring uh, of all ages. I guess the one last bit of advice, and, and you've already talked about this today, is mentoring, we should both give it and ask for it across our life course. I so I actively mentor others, and I see that as a serious activity, as you said, so that we're having sessions and my mentees figuring out their plans and touching base with them about how they're doing. But I also continue to ask for individuals to serve as my mentors. That's Those are great. powerful relationships. Yes, because they can see things objectively. Yes. They have a different lens, you know, and it yes. might be something, they might focus on something that has nothing to do with work. Like, that's right. Lisa, when's the last time you took time for yourself? That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And I, uh, I welcome those questions. Yesterday, one of my employees said, as it pertains to that, Janine, we were having a conversation and through the pandemic, I think it's so important. I've been checking on people and just mm -hmm. seeing how they're doing. And an employee said, you always ask us if we're okay. Are you okay? 
Oh. And you know, that was so meaningful, so meaningful to me. So meaningful to me. Because we're done having those conversations of, hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. We're, we're done. Yes, we're done. We're done. Yeah. And that wasn't my answer. It was, I'm more okay some days than others. That's a good response. Right? Yeah. Truth. Right. Absolute truth. Well, yeah. Lisa, I've really enjoyed this. It's always great. Thank to you. Me. Thank you. Look forward to our next conversation, Janine. Absolutely.